Hello everyone, in this video I just want to show you how to solve a static equilibrium of forces using the sign rule. It says a block of mass uh, 5 kg is suspended by two cords as shown on the diagram below. Okay, so here's the diagram. You have to calculate T1 and T2. Okay guys, before I discuss and show you how to solve the problem, okay, I just want to bring to your attention that uh, there are three things that are involved here. Uh, number one is going to be this part here, which could represent a roof or ceiling, okay? So let's say now this is roof, okay? And there are strings, okay? So we've got string one and string two and string three, okay? So uh, we have uh, strings. And we also have um, the block, Okay, and we all, we have the block. Okay, so now, uh, because the block is suspended, it means it is stationary. If it is stationary, it also means uh, the magnitude of the net force acting on the block is equal to zero. So we can say F net is equal to zero newtons. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, indicate all the forces that are acting on the block and also the forces that are acting uh, at this point, the point where uh, the strings uh, join together. Okay, so on the block, there is going to be a FG, okay, or the weight of the uh, block. Also, acting on the block is going to be T3. T3 is going to be upward on the block. But at this point, okay, T3 is going to be downwards. Okay, also uh, on this point, we have T2, like this acting upwards. Uh, T2 also acts uh, on the ceiling or the roof, but it acts downwards, okay? So if I'm now considering T1, I have T1 uh, upwards like this, okay, acting on the dot. So this one is T2, I said, and on the ceiling, T1 is acting uh, downwards, okay? So this is T1, okay? And this is uh, T2, okay? So uh, what I'm going to do next is to draw, okay, all the forces that are acting uh, at this point, okay? So I draw a free body diagram. So I draw a dot and I indicate all the forces acting on that point. Okay, so that will be a T2 in this direction. And I, in, I draw in FG, sorry, uh, let me say, call it T3. And I draw in T1. Okay, guys, now we have a free body diagram showing all the forces that are acting on the point of conduct, this point here, okay? The point where all the strings join, okay? Because this point is at equilibrium, it means the net force that acts on it is equal to zero newtons. And if the point is at equilibrium, the forces that act on it can be moved to give us a, what is called a vector diagram, which is essentially a triangle of forces. Okay, so how we do that, we, we simply move uh, forces without changing their directions. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, move T1, okay? I just draw a line like this, and T2 is moved down here. Okay, so I'll put arrows, and this is going to be T1 in this direction. Okay, so I'll draw, I'll simply draw that a triangle here. Okay, so it will be a, a force downwards and a T2 like this and T1 here. It's going to be T1. Okay, so this is a T3. Okay, guys, uh, because we've drawn a triangle of forces now, 
we need now to uh, work out the sizes of these angles. Okay. So what I'm going to do next is to show you how to work out uh, the sizes of these angles. Okay, guys, I've already drawn in that uh, vector diagram again, the triangle. Okay. Also, uh, notice here that I've, instead of uh, calling this vertical force T3, I've called it FG, the weight of this block. Okay. So uh, now I'm going to show you why. Okay. If this block is uh, stationary, not moving, and uh, the net force that acts on the block is equal to zero. We notice that there are two forces that are acting, only two forces that are acting on the block. It is Fg, which is the weight. Uh, we can also call this one W. Okay, it's Fg uh, downwards and as well as uh, T3 upwards. So if Fg uh, is downwards, T3 is upward. T3 must be equal to uh, Fg for the forces uh, to be balanced, meaning the force up is equal to the force down. Okay, so uh, we note here that T3 is equal to Fg. Okay, so instead of writing T3 here, I've written uh, Fg, which is the weight of the object. Okay, so and one more thing, since we are given mass, we can calculate the uh, size of this force. Okay, and um, uh, we have a formula Fg is equal to mass times the gravitational acceleration. Okay, so this, this is going to be 5 times 9,8. Okay, so we have to take out our calculator and uh, find the answer. So 5 times 9,8. Okay, this gives us 49. Okay, so we have 49. Uh, newtons here okay as our answer okay so we have a triangle here with one known side which is a uh, 49 newtons okay so now uh, i also want to work out the angles inside i want to show you how to work out the angles uh, the, the size of this angle and this angle and this angle okay so to do that let's go back to uh, the diagram, the, give the original uh, diagram, the question paper. Okay, so we have to look at this. So we are given two angles here, uh, 37 degrees and 57 degrees. Okay, so we note that uh, the angle between the ceiling or the roof and T1 is 37 degrees. It means if we go to our triangle, it means the angle between, right, uh, the horizontal and T1 is 37. Okay, if this angle is 37 degrees, what is the size of this one inside? Remember that if I've got two lines that are perpendicular to each other, and I'm giving that this is 37 degrees, okay? So what is going to be the size uh, of this angle? Because the total angle is 90 degrees. So all I have to do is to say uh, 90 minus 37. That gives me 53. It means the size of this angle is 53 degrees. Okay, now let's go ahead and work out the size of this angle. So we've got T2 here. Let's go back to the uh, question and check out T2. T2 makes an angle of 57 degrees with the horizontal. Okay, here's the angle is given here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to my triangle and I'm saying uh, if T2 makes 57, so this angle is 57 degrees with the horizontal, what is the angle in the size of the angle inside here? Okay, again, I'm just going to say uh, 90 minus 57. That's going to give me uh, 33. Okay, so the size of this 
angle inside is 33 degrees. Now, I've got two angles inside my triangle. How do I work out the dead angle? So because the sum of angles inside a triangle is equal to 180 degrees, so I'm just going to say, uh, let's call this one a uh, unknown y. Okay. So I will have uh, 53 plus angle y plus uh, 33 degrees equals to 180 degrees. So what I can do is to say, uh, 180 degrees, 180 degrees minus uh, 53 minus 33. Okay, so I'm getting uh, 94 uh, degrees. Okay, so the size of this angle is 94 degrees. Okay, guys, now we have a triangle with one known side and three angles inside. Okay, so uh, how are we going to calculate the magnitude of T1 and that of T2? Okay, so that's exactly what I'm going to show you now. There are two methods to do it. The first one is using the sine rule or a, a trick ratios if the, if the triangle is right angled. Okay, but this one, is not right angled. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use sine rule. For those of you who do not know what sine rule is, okay? So sine rule goes like this. Assume we have a, a triangle, okay? Right? And with vertices A, B, and C, right? We're going to call the side opposite angle A, small letter A, and this one C, and this one B, okay? So where A, where the small letter A, B, and C represent the, uh, the lengths, okay? So meaning uh, C represent the length of A, B, and this A here represent the length of B, C, and this one represent the length of uh, A, C, okay? So, now, sine rule goes like this. It says A over sine of the angle opposite A, which is A, is equals to B over sine B, A equals to C over sine C. This is sine rule. Okay, so sine rule is very, very useful because uh, if you've got a triangle and with, with one known side, you can solve for the other uh, two unknown sides. So that's exactly what we're going to do here because in this triangle, we, we know one side. So we'll find the other side, okay, t, which is T1 and T2. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. So if we look at our triangle, right, we want to find a T1. So we're going to say T1, right, over sine of an angle. Which angle? Okay, the angle that we pick must be opposite this side. So we're going to say sine 33 degrees, okay, is equals to. The known side is this one, FG. So we, we're going to say this is FG divided by sine of 94 degrees because the side, sorry, I mean the angle that is opposite uh, FG is uh, 94 degrees. And then we're going to substitute for FG. So we have T1, okay, over uh, sine 33 degrees equals to 49 over uh, sine 94 degrees. Okay, so now we have an equation with one unknown, T1. It means we can solve for the unknown T1. So it means T1 is equals to uh, 49 uh, divided by sine 94 degrees times, right, sine uh, 33 degrees. Okay, I can then take my calculator and uh, solve for the magnitude of T1. 
Okay, so it's going to be 49 uh, over uh, sine 94. Okay, All right, so let me multiply that by sine 33. Okay, so that gives me 26,75 if I run that off uh, to two decimal places. Okay, the unit here is going to be a newton because we're calculating the magnitude of the force uh, or the tension in the string T1. Okay, so likewise, guys, we can calculate the magnitude of T2 by applying a sine rule. Okay, so if you look at this one, uh, T2, so I'm going to write T2 over, okay, sine uh, 53 degrees, okay, is equals to T2 over sine is equals to, uh, I'm going to pick the known side again. So it's going to be uh, FG divided by uh, sine 94 degrees. Okay, so, and then I'll say T2 over sine uh, 53 is equals to uh, 49 over sine 94 degrees. Okay, and therefore T2 is equal to 49 over sine 94 degrees. Okay, let me pull that down. Uh, times uh, sine 53 degrees. This is equals to, let me do the calculation. So I'm just going to uh, add it here. This is sine, uh, it should be sine uh, 53, right? And the answer to that is 39,23. Okay, so we have uh, 39 comma two three newtons okay guys we've reached the end of the video please don't forget to subscribe and press the like button and the notification bell to receive all my videos when i post